Hello and welcome to part 37 of the mod making series for the mod locked loot containers. And yeah, it's uh it's been a little while since I uh made any videos in this series. Um at least 2 weeks, at most 3 weeks I think it's been. Some somewhere um somewhere around there, probably about more like 2 weeks or so, a little bit more than 2 weeks. And yeah, I, I've still been working on the mod, but like, just kind of here and there, like, pretty slowly. I've been definitely, like, uh, dragging my feet on a lot of stuff for, uh, this mod, um, in particular, unfortunately. But, um, you know, I've still been working on it and such. And in this video, I just wanted to kind of go over a little roadblock that I've been sort of, um, trying to get past. And I don't really think, like, I think I'm... I should be good next time I get the motivation that I feel like working on this particular um, aspect or feature. I mean, it's a very important aspect. It's the actual, like, loot generation, you know, part of the actual uh, loot containers, the, the chest, whatever. So it's a pretty important part, all things considered. But I just wanted to, I felt like doing a little uh, visual presentation of sorts to kind of explain why I've been having this sort of, um, not so much mental block in this case, but just sort of this difficulty with this particular thing for a little bit, you know, and I figured it might be potentially useful on understanding how, or trying to understand for others how Daggerfall Unity or Daggerfall, I guess, itself, but mostly Daggerfall Unity specifically, how its loot system works. And some of the challenges I've been having trying to work with that system in my own system with my, my mod. And as well as thinking of ways and trying to implement ways my of my own to do something, you know, of the same vein, but in a different way. A, a way that is intended to be better for my particular purposes. So yeah, uh, this visual presentation might hopefully be possibly useful for me in the future if I ever go back to it or something, even though I probably won't need to, but I, it's always good to get stuff that's off your head, off your mind, whatever, and onto a, you know, <laughs> down onto metaphorical paper or whatever. And it might be interesting to others, so I figured I might as well do like a little presentation here. So I guess let's get started with that. So... Yeah, it's really, uh, it's really amateur-ish what I'm doing here, but it, it's just, I'm just using GIMP, and I'm just kind of going with, like, you know, pictures, and hopefully I could use those pictures to augment my words, or augment those pictures with my words to try and make a, uh, full image of what the challenges or issues are or reasons are for certain things. I guess the first thing I'll go over or try to go over is the way that Daggerfall Unity does its loot system is primarily through what is called a, well, I don't know if it's the textbook kind of definition for what a loot table is, quote unquote, but that is the idea, is that it uses a sort of loot table to determine what the odds are and what items can drop for certain uh, enemies or loot piles themselves that are generated in dungeons. The loot piles primarily, as well as the enemies themselves, what, they're what, what they have in their inventory and what they drop when you kill them in that same sense. This does not include... The shop shelves, like how those, or even basically any shops, this does not count the shops. Uh, in this presentation, I'm not going to talk about that, because it's not that it's necessarily more complicated or anything. It's just a different way that it is done. And it's, like, maybe I'll talk about it a little bit, but I'm not going to go into too much, like, crazy detail about it. Because it is, like, kind of similar, but it is also very different in the same way it's 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 quite interesting how it does work and it actually is very convincing in how it works to in some ways even though it's a little bit strange when you kind of realize like oh it works like that that's weird but yeah this is specifically for the loot piles that generate inside dungeons 
I guess as well, that also counts the loot piles that you'd find in um, houses, such as those, like, clothing piles and stuff, which are kind of stupid that they exist, but yeah, that probably counts those too. And the actual enemies inventory themselves. So, what a loot table kind of is, at least in this case, it, it might be, it kind of is different in other games, sort of, like... When I, you know, when you look up a loot table, you mostly get results for stuff like Minecraft, which has loot tables for stuff like the random generated chests that you can find in like very in dungeons or end cities or nether fortresses and stuff like that. Like they have different loot tables. Same thing with the mobs or the enemies, whatever. They have different loot tables like they could drop. They got like a 50% chance to drop like one to five bones or something like that or two to three rotten flesh or 2% chance to drop like an iron ingot or two or something like that. That's kind of the deal with how the loot tables work in Minecraft. It's a fairly, you know, simple way that it works, especially for the mobs where it's generally, uh, generally just one thing at a time that can drop. So it's not too complicated. And in Daggerfall's case, it's sort of similar it's in a similar vein but it's more complex in that it has multiple items it's more like the chest in minecraft more than the enemies where it could spawn multiple items of different types and in different quantities and it has different odds and stuff like that based on the enemy and all that stuff and it's not even so much based on the enemy but more so what table is assigned to said enemy what value of table what specific table is a given to an enemy so it's not so much what the enemy drops but it's what that particular loot table they have attached to them reference to them actually drops and what its odds are which is why you'll see many enemies have very similar kind of loot tables besides like maybe one or two like little differences here and there it's kind of a rudimentary system in that way and that's why i always thought that the loot for enemies, especially in Daggerfall, always kind of like, not that it's not so much that the loot itself sucks, but just the system always kind of sucked. I thought it was not very um, convincing or immersive, whatever you want to say. It was like, oh, like, what the hell is this harpy having, like, random ingredients for and shit? Why is this Daedra Lord carrying, like, a unicorn horn? Like, weird stuff like that. So how am I gonna, how should I first explain this? So... The way that items are categorized in Daggerfall, or at least Daggerfall Unity, it's probably very similar to Daggerfall DOS itself, but in this case, I only have the I only personally have the source code that I could read from Daggerfall Unity. So the way that items are characterized or categorized is in something called an item group. And as you, like, as you can see here in this kind of like ugly collage I made of, of screenshots of the code, is that there, for the vanilla items at least, there are, there is this thing, an enum value, this, this enum, whatever you want to call it, this list of things, kind of list, whatever you want to say, like categorization of things, just called all the item groups in the vanilla game. And there's quite a few. It goes from from zero for drugs all the way down to twenty eight for currency. And you got all basically all the all the stuff down like in there that were like categorized in whatever way: misc items, quest items, jewelry, uh, deeds, transportation, creature ingredients three, creature ingredients two, creature ingredients one, plant part plant ingredients two, plant ingredients one, gems, paintings. Women's clothing, men clothing, furniture, which never really gets used in the game because it's, it was never really implemented sort of stuff. Useless items, useless items too, armor, weapons, artifacts, books, maps. Maps might be under misc items, but I think you get the idea. Is that they're all kind of categorized under these, I guess you could say 29. Let's say, let's just say 30. Let's say it's not 30, but let's just say 30. Um, because it's a more even number. Let's say 30 different item groups categorize all of the vanilla items in the game. And each item group of these 30 have their own list of things that are a list of things that are in that 
particular what items specifically or what item types are in that specific item group as well so let's say for the item group of armor it has all the armor pieces such as cuirass gauntlets greaves left right pauldron helm boots buckler uh round shield kite shield tower shield all that deal got weapons all the weapon types such as dagger tonto staff short bow long bow even arrows you get the idea uh jewelry it has stuff like amulet bracer ring bracelet mark torque cloth amulet wand wand is, is, is considered a jewelry yeah that's why you can find it in the jewelers uh gem stores useless items too uh has stuff like that is normally useless in the game unless you have certain settings or mods such as the torch the lantern bandages oil candles parchment all that stuff Religious items, all of those things like Holy Dagger, Holy Tome, Holy Candle, Scarab, Icon, just all those kind of stuff that you could sell to, uh, sell to, and can you buy from? I think, yeah, I'm pretty sure you could buy from, it's just like, who, why would you buy them? But, yeah, you could buy them and sell them to, uh, pawn shops and stuff. You even have categories that have literally just one thing in them, like currency, just has gold pieces, that's it, like, gold pieces have their own item group and that's that's all it is <laughs> uh but then you start getting into more ones that kind of matter for this well they all matter but they matter more for this in how it's kind of weird that you have stuff like plant ingredients one and plant ingredients two plant ingredients one i guess in the manual or the the, the chronicles or whatever the heck it was the um the booklet that was kind of like a behind the scenes thing i guess for daggerfall when it was in development or something like that that was used a lot for referencing stuff while making that or trying to make daggerfall unity and such plant ingredients one i believe is the group item group that would be for like temperate ingredients stuff that is in like a um a cooler climate such as like in the mountains or like whatever those kind of regions then plant ingredients two would have stuff like that would be plant stuff that is I, like it's a lot of the same stuff but there's a few things here and there that are different such as they have like cactus for the more warmer climates and stuff like that so that is kind of weird or not so much weird but it's kind of weird how it's done that way uh but then you have the even weirder ones like creature ingredients creature creature ingredients one creature ingredients two creature ingredients three and creature ingredients one have a whole crap ton of like uh creature ingredients and the other two two and three have like i don't know six each i think i think creature ingredients three actually has like three <laughs> three for some reason and then two has like uh five it looks like and it's all like it, it you kind of it makes some sense like it's kind of you could kind of see, but then it also doesn't at the same time. It's just very strange how they did it. Because you have weird shit. Like, like if you had if you had in the loot table of, like, whatever enemy, Creature Ingredients 2, then it would just be rolling for that specific uh, ingredient. It would just roll, like, these five items. And it's like... It, they don't make that much sense for a lot of enemies that can drop these. Like, yeah, like, sure, they can make sense for stuff like mages or sorcerers, whatever, those kind of things that might be using those for alchemical things. But then just all the enemies that are enemies, like, you know, why the hell does that thing have, like, a scorpion stinger or, like, a mummy wrapping? Like, it's just weird. And this, this happens a lot, and this is why I'm going to get to the uh, thing where I have some difficulty trying to uh do stuff with these uh, these particular like vanilla loot tables or whatever uh and then there's even more stuff like the metal stuff like platinum gold uh copper lead all that um lodestone brass all that stuff that really doesn't have too much practical use but yeah i think you kind of hopefully get the idea is that all these items are in their own item group categorized basically just kind of like not randomly but 
for some cases it feels like random it's like what you know what the hell why is there so much in creature ingredients one but then not in two and three like what was even the point of separating them you know yeah i'll, I'll get deeper into this so that's how the items are categorized and broken down into different groups in daggerfall unity vanilla and these item groups are used in the actual like loot table itself to determine which one of these will get chosen or randomly chosen potentially to get put into the inventory of said loot pile or the enemy and then when you kill it or you loot it then you'll find it there and then you could you know pick it up so this is what the actual like loot table looks like kind of like in the code this is what is called the loot chance matrix at least so it's not necessarily the loot table itself but it's it's basically the code like matrix of all these values that make up the loot table kind of like the letter k is for the crypt type dungeons dungeon types the n is for prison m is for mine and natural cave q coven k vampire haunt Oh, that's weird. Okay. <laughs> that, huh. Yeah, maybe they share. Maybe? That, that could be the case. Maybe they. Maybe that just means that they share similar uh, loot tables then for, for different dungeon types. They're not all different, which, once again, is like something that I wouldn't be a fan of because I think that something like a vampire hunt, while it's similar to a crypt, possibly maybe it should have a slightly different loot you know what i mean like but obviously there's reasons and advantages to something like this especially in a game that was made in like whatever 1994 or whatever 1996 i don't know so yeah and a lot of games do this loot table sort of thing but what i want to try to do where it's a little bit more detailed and nuanced it's like it could work but it also wouldn't be like to my kind of satisfaction. Like, I'm not a huge fan of how it, it works in the end. So that's why I'm going to explain later, like, wh what way I'm trying to do it. But anyway, let's get back to this loot table thing here. So, as you can see, it says, like, new loot chance matrix. And then it goes down in just a straight line, listing a bunch of letters with numbers after them and shit like that. Kind of confusing to read. But it makes more sense when you're just like, okay, like you, you understand what WP means and AM, max, min, min gold and max gold, probably the easiest in English to like, <laughs> just see what that kind of is trying to reference. Basically, the idea is like, okay, so we saw before for crypt and vampire haunts, the key is K. The, the, uh, the key, f th there is a key K, the letter K. And then it goes down this thing here, this like list of these values, like max gold or min gold one, max gold 10, P1, P2 is uh, plant ingredient one and plant ingredient two, C1, C2, C3, creature ingredient one, two, and three. Um, M1 might be misc, the misc one maybe, or maybe metal one. AM I'm certain is armor, I think. I'm pretty sure it's armor. Weapon, WP is weapon. And let's see. What's CL stand for? Clothing? Probably CL is probably clothes. Um, yeah, and then it just kind of like... That's the idea. Is that stuff like AM is probably for armor almost definitely. Weapon is definitely for weapon. And then you see the value after it, which is... I'm pretty sure just a value from 0 to uh, probably whatever you want it to be, but I think most of the time it's either 0 to 100. 0 being the basically the odds initially that this loot, that that particular um, item group will have a, you know, a dice roll, like whatever, a 100-sided <laughs> a dice rolled. If it succeeds, says roll, said roll, then it'll generate an item within that item group, like, um, randomly, I guess you could say. Like, it just picks, it picks a weapon from that item group. If it succeeds, 
you know, once it generates that item that it succeeded with or whatever, and it rolled and it picked an item or an armor piece, whatever, or a creature ingredient or a plant ingredient, then it puts that in the loot pile or in the, the loot table, or I'm sorry, in the loot collection of the enemy or the loot pile, whatever, and then it's populated, whatever, it's there. And then it does the same thing with all of the other... It goes through all of these other um, loot table values and does the same thing where it rolls each one like a hundred sided dice, depending on what it is. And then it, it either is a yes or a no, then it picks one. And interestingly, in Daggerfall with this particular system, it's not like Minecraft where it will succeed in saying that it succeeded in choosing this particular item to generate and then I, I believe in minecraft it just rolls a range of what how many items of that type can generate in that thing that chest or whatever so it could be like iron ingots one to three in this case daggerfall's case when it succeeds it succeeds only on that individual roll so let's say for crypt loot piles let's let's just say hypothetically here i think that's what it's saying for crypt loot piles there's a 50 percent chance on the initial roll when that thing is being generated that loot pile is being generated there's a 50 percent chance that a weapon of some type some random type of whatever weapon will generate in there and if it fails then it goes to the next item type, which in this case would be MI. I don't know what that, maybe misc ingredients, I don't know. Um, but if it succeeds, then it generates the item, and then it loops back around, and then it tries to roll again. But instead, before it went through that loop again, it changed that value, that 50%, and it halved it. It, it multiplied it by 0.5. So now, at least in, in uh, theory, 50 times 0 0.5, 50 divided by 2 is 25. So now there is a 25% chance rolled again to see if another weapon will generate. And then it keeps doing this until it fails. It keeps doing this and it keeps dividing it by 2 every time until it fails. And then it goes on to the next one. This is why... Or at least I believe this is part of why, like you'll see in DOS Daggerfall as well as Daggerfall Unity, well, that might, it might, that might have been fixed sort of in Daggerfall Unity, but it, it's, it's a similar kind of thing. You'll see on stuff like Orcs or uh, Warrior Classes or whatever Fighter kind of classes, you'll see on their bodies a lot of times they'll have like a whole like an armory full of fucking armor and weapons and like stuff like the same armor with uh, of the same part or whatever like you'll have like two left pauldrons three left pauldrons or some weird shit like that and this is why because you know it could potentially uh keep succeeding like i don't know you know it's not going to ever go on forever or whatever but it potentially can go on for a pretty long time and generate a lot of items within that type of item group. That's why on some enemies you'll find a whole shit ton of ingredients and on others you'll find, like, nothing. Overall, that's how uh, Daggerfall Unity's loot table system works. So, as we said with the, as I said with the uh, Crypt and the Vampire Haunts, that apparently is 4K, and that is, like, the one I just went over is it's all this stuff. But then you'll say the loot tables also also are accounting for enemies loot loot as well. Not just for dungeon loot pile based on the dungeon type, but the enemies as well. So let's say like I'm just I, I'm pretty sure this is wrong, but I'm just going off of uh, what I'm looking at here. E. Let's say that E is is for a lich or something like that. So its base gold loot table value is is a minimum of 20 will generate and a maximum of 80 base. But for the lich, let's say that for all the enemies, I'm pretty sure their gold that they drop or that's on their body, whatever, the gold that they generate with is that base value 
whatever generates there, and then that is multiplied by that enemy's current level. So let's say a lich is like, an ancient lich is like level 21 or something. So if it was, if it got a 20, then it would generate like, yeah, like 420 or whatever. Like, I don't think that's correct. There might be, there might be something I'm missing there, but it, that's kind of the idea. Like, and it's the same deal with the loot piles, but I don't think the loot piles are affected by the player's level, nor the, you know, because it's not attached to an enemy. In that case, just the loot piles in the dungeon. That's why you'll usually find that you get way more money from enemies later on compared to the loot piles in dungeons, because the enemies, they have a multiplier, I'm pretty sure based on their level, uh, that makes that gold amount super high compared to uh, the actual, like, dungeon loot piles or whatever. But yeah, the enemies, they have the same shit. And uh, there, are, there is many instances, I'm pretty certain, that a lot of enemies uh, have the same loot table key as other ones. So you see stuff like that's probably very similar. Like, I'm pretty sure that Daedra, Fire Daedra, and Frost Daedra probably have a very similar or almost the same loot table as loot table key as the Daedra Lord because you see that their kind of loot is very similar where it's mostly gold and sometimes some stupid ingredients but that's about it but with this system there comes many disadvantages as I'm sure that you could probably kind of assume from how I'm uh, putting it I guess but that's generally how it works uh, and I kind of explained it probably in the worst way by just kind of looking at this image but hopefully that made some sense I should have more did this visual one but I guess for the sake of that I made this visual thing, then I'll just try to uh, sort of visualize it here, I guess. Like, I don't know. Let's say that we were talking about that loot table TK, where it had a chance of 1 to 10 gold. And in that case, that means there's always going to be at least one gold in there. At least that should be how it works. So then it rolls that 1 to 10, and it determines, all right, so, okay, so let's say it rolled a 5, and that's like, okay, roll a 5, put 5 gold pieces in that loot pile. In this case, it looks like a chest, but it's, it's, a, it's the loot pile. Um, and then after that, it's like, okay, it rolls um, plant ingredients. It rolls plant ingredients 1. And plant ingredients one, let's say, is like a, I don't know, like a 3% chance or some shit. Let's say that it rolled, uh, it succeeded. So it's like, okay, put put a plant ingredient in there. Out of that, that group of plants, plant ingredient ones, let, do that. And then does plant ingredients two, but it, it fails, so it doesn't put any other plant ingredients there from two. And then it does uh, creature ingredients, and then it, it rolls, uh, succeeds for whatever the Gorgon snake is, and then it does that. And then maybe it's, uh, it succeeds again for that creature ingredients, and then you get a Daedra heart in there, I don't know. And then it succeeds for uh, a weapon, and it, it, it puts a, a weapon in there. Like, I don't even think that that visual... <laughs> I don't think that visual thing helped that much, honestly. So that was a good that was a good use of like thirty minutes. But <laughs> um, I think hopefully you kind of get the get what I'm get what I'm putting down here. But yeah, the, the disadvantage with that is that, as I said, it, it's very difficult with that kind of quote-unquote limitation of only having say three or four different loot groups or item groups with various different items is that it's randomly choosing one of those items say if you know say if you wanted to generate like a specific item for a specific enemy to drop like let's like this doesn't exist but say a rat tail for like if you kill the rat then it has a hundred percent chance to drop a rat tail or something you could easily do that, but if you tried to do that with this kind of loot system we got here, even though a rat tail doesn't exist, it wouldn't really work. Because you could say, 
Okay, give me a 100% chance for a creature ingredient one. And then on that rat, even if a rat tail's in that item group of creature ingredient one, you're just as likely to get any, well, at least in theory, you're just as likely to get any of the other items that are in that item group chosen and selected, as well as multiples of them, or multiple different ones potentially in that same rat <laughs> loot. Um, if it succeeds multiple times. So it completely fails in that sense for uh, that particular thing, which is why you see weird shit. Like, why does a Daedra Lord have, uh, I, I don't know, like a, a Gorgon Snake or a Griffin Feather or whatever? Like, why does why is he holding that, uh, of all things? And he doesn't drop weapons. Like, what what is with that? I mean, that's just them, how they did it. Like, they could have made him drop weapons, but he doesn't. And that kind of system, like, while it works on a base fundamental level, it does its job. It's just very, at least I would kind of term it as, like, immersion breaking, or it's like, I don't know, it doesn't feel right when you have enemies dropping stuff that just doesn't make, to you it doesn't make sense, or, like, the theme doesn't make sense, like, why would they have that kind of thing? Why doesn't a mummy always drop mummy wrappings? Why do so many enemies seem to have mummy wrappings instead of just, like, I don't know, more practical shit on them? Like, just weird stuff. But that's that's kind of just how the, the limitation of the loot tables is they have that sort of thing. And I definitely don't want to use that for my... Well, like, thing is, maybe not so much loot table per se, but maybe something similar. But the loot tables in the vanilla Daggerfall game... Daggerfall Unity, whatever. I don't want to use in this case because it's it's just not up to my standards of what I want for that kind of loop generation system where it's more detailed and nuanced and attempts to make more sense of why of like things that would be in a chest or whatever be in that particular location inside a chest. So that's why I've been having some difficulty, obviously, because I've had to think up you know, kind of new ways. And it's not so much a new way that I've been thinking of, but it was a, like like a new way entirely because I had a system like this already for uh, at least one of my mods, that being uh, Jewelry Editions, where I did this, this sort of, um, yeah, this is a, a different slide now or a different, <laughs> different project, whatever you call it, pro uh, picture. I have this system where I pick a ticket out of a hat. Pick a ticket method. That's the term I am giving it for now. Pick a ticket method. The idea being that, it, you know, it's it's a fairly, I think a fairly uh, intuitive kind of thing. Like it, it should make a fairly decent amount of sense. Is that you put a certain amount of tickets in a hat for a particular item or an item type or an item group in this case, whatever. And at the end of that, when you put all the, the item types in there, you pick one and then you choose, you use that one, whatever one you picked, you know, if the role succeeded, whatever, for it to actually pick it an item in the first place. But that's kind of the idea as well as potentially picking a ticket for the items themselves within said item groups. That was kind of one of the things I was having some difficulty with was conceptualizing how I was going to do this stuff. Because I was like, okay, the way I was looking at it, I was going to be going by the default item groups that Daggerfall Unity has, that, that the all the item groups that I showed you before and to me, I was like, most of these are just not, unfortunately, not sufficient to the ways that I'm trying to do this. And if I was going to use them, I would have to do a lot more unnecessary work and processing to filter out the items after an item group was picked that I do not want. So I was like, well, why don't I just that this is the, the solution, at least for now. That I've kind of come up with because I couldn't really think of any better one. Nobody really gave me any suggestions for a better one yet. So I just kind of said, okay, this is most likely what I'm going to go with. And I'm just going to do a similar system to the 
to what Daggerfell Unity has, but the um the item groups. But I'm just going to define my own item groups and then put the items in there the way that I want them. Or like or maybe make it may maybe make multiple item groups for the same things. Like maybe armor heavy, armor light, armor leather, I don't know, like different types of now this wouldn't matter in the vanilla game really because in the vanilla game you you basically just have leather chain and all the different types of plate but now if i wanted to take into consideration which i do stuff like mods other mods like role play realism items i want to also if that is installed take into consideration stuff like the brigandine and the uh whatever the other one was called the chain the chain plate mail armor whatever the chain uh, mail armor with the different uh, material types and such and such or for stuff like books i want to take into consideration stuff like um the uh skill books mod and uh, whatever and my own mod obviously the the jewelry additions the uh, the jewelry items from that if it's installed like that kind of stuff and if i make my own if i define my own item groups based on that then I can hopefully, at least in theory, to my desires or satisfaction, whatever, I can I can filter out the items that I don't want in specific I don't want to generate in specific situations. And the ones that I do want to generate, I could, you know, do the same without having to do like a whole crap ton of extra processing just to filter out the stuff I don't want. Uh, at least that's the theory. You know, I could have stuff like armor temperate, I don't know, like armor wet, armor, uh, desert, like armor that generates mostly in more often or not than in deserts, whereas armor temperate would be in stuff that's more wet or swampy, whatever, like, like plate armor might generate more damaged or more, um, less frequently, or whatever kind of thing, uh, in certain places, and in certain conditions, and this would be just more annoying to do, like, it's not a great example with that, but stuff like the ingredients, like, I might want the plant ingredients, I might just take all the plant ingredients, and just throw them all into one item group, and say, you know, screw it, or completely categorize them in different ways, like leafy plants and uh, fruit plants, like berries, and possibly eventually, you know, modded uh, ingredients and stuff like that. Uh, gems, which already are there. Metals uh, already there. The kind of like solvents, like they have the water, the pure water, the uh, icor, and the uh, snake venom, and all that kind of crap. The liquids, all that stuff. Like if I put them into my own item groups, then I can potentially, like, you know, one could say, well, why don't you just specify each individual item? Well, the issue there is that, you know, there's hundreds of different items. So that would, while that would be possible, that would also just be really goddamn messy and would get probably really confusing after a while. It would just be really messy, really confusing after a point, and a lot of manual work to kind of try to code those specific things in like you just have one line with like a hundred items in itself or some shit like that instead of just like oh okay one item group that has a hundred items like that kind of deal so that was kind of the challenge that i had to get through in my mind thinking like what way am i going to do this and that's the that's the way that i'm thinking of right now is that i'm going to Find, I'm going to find at least all the vanilla items and probably go through as well the modded ones afterward uh, with their IDs and such and try and categorize them all into different item groups that I can hopefully use that would make it more easy for me to use them in this kind of way and pick from them like kind of semi-randomly and such. And then in the cases where I want to put in specific items, I can do that, just manually place like an item, but... That one, that that way might not be used too much, too often because, you know, it can, you know, what in what ways do you determine, like, okay, now I want to put a piece of uh, left 
uh, a left pauldron into this thing instead of something else or whatever. So it's probably mostly going to be the ticket, pick a ticket method more than uh, the manual replace methods. Uh, man, once again, this graphic, I'm just, I'm just talking more than I'm using this fucking graphic. I mean, hopefully it helps like a little bit, but like, you know, pick a ticket. And then if you get that ticket, then, then roll it from those custom item groups I'm going to make and define, and then put, say if it, if it was, uh, if it, uh, picked a ticket for creature ingredients, Daedra, I don't know, it would say, okay, pick the ticket and then it rolled a Daedra heart. And it was like, okay, put a Daedra heart in that loot pot, in that chest. Or if it picked a ticket and it was like, uh, okay, uh, clothing. Then it would say, okay, boots. Put some boots in there. Pick a ticket and then it was like, books. Put some books. Put a book in there, whatever. Gemstones, same deal, like everything... Same kind of deal. Now, the other thing I mentioned before as well with the uh, the actual, like, the gold generation, because I want some chests to generate probably a pretty large amount of gold compared to what it normally you expect to find, like up to, like, 3,000 probably at most, most times. Like, after a point, the gold, unless you're doing, like, a specific thing, like, oh, look, you only, you can only carry so much of this gold before it goes away, so pick up what you can. Um, you put, like, a two million gold pieces in there, but you can only pick up, like, 10,000, haha. Well, one thing I'd probably do that Daggerfall does not do is I'd put, like, letters of credit in there instead or something like that. So it'd be like, oh, you found a chest and it, it had a bunch of letters of credit that are worth, like... 50,000 or some shit put together or all in in one I don't know but yeah man I, I I really completely squandered most of these graphics I made because I really didn't I really didn't use them as a uh, great visual aid much but you know hopefully it got the idea across I guess even though I kind of wasted <laughs> wasted time making these graphics in honesty uh but uh yeah so that's that was the kind of mental roadblock I had to get through, and I st I'm still kind of getting through. But I had to suss out in my 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 mind in myself to figure out what way I was gonna do this loot generation for the chest. And at least for right now, this is the one that I know how to do for the most part. Like I, I know how to do it. So I think I'm just gonna stick with it because nobody's really giving me. You know, when I asked for anybody if they want to, you know, had any ideas, like nobody really gave me any suggestions. So I was like, okay, screw it. Then I'll just go with what I, I already know and just do this pick a ticket method. Even though it has many flaws in itself, it seems to generally work on a fairly small scale. So it's like, okay, I, I'll just try this and hopefully it works to my satisfaction. I still have to do the coding and everything. I literally have like... I've barely, like, done much coding. Well, I've, I've done some, but, like, really not that much. The thing that's kind of that's kind of blocking me right now is that I'm just like, oh, man, I just got to make all those item groups and crap like that. So I just, I got to suss that out in my mind and then put that down into the code in this, this LLC enums class and everything. And then I could use those loot groups and, or those item groups. Uh, and randomly pick from them whenever I pick whatever an item group from the hat and oh yeah some other details I guess I wanted to mention that I want to possibly consider is like the size of the items because I mentioned you know you know like a chest is a limited space so you can't put a fucking like a truck into a chest and expect that to make any sense so I may have some system where it's like I, I, I try to consider the actual size of the chest to some extent and so it doesn't get like absurd how many items are in there of different sizes and shit. But I was thinking like, man, could you really put a claymore into a chest? But then I was thinking like, I don't know, maybe that's one of those things to just suspend disbelief because it's like that'd be kind of that kind of sucks to be like, oh, OK, you can never find tower shields or die katanas 
or uh, claymores in chest. Maybe I'll make it so you can only find one at a time in there or something, and then maybe other smaller weapons you could find multiple or some shit. Maybe that would explain it away better. But the other thing I was considering stuff like the that hidden compartment component I was I, I've talked about before is stuff like a hidden compartment would obviously be very small, so maybe the biggest thing you could potentially fit in there would be stuff like really tiny things like a dagger or a tonto, like short, really short blades, and stuff like a little bit of gold, or maybe letters of credit shoved in there, or maybe a potion or some shit like that, or jewelry, especially gems. So like that hidden compartment thing would probably be exclusive to only smaller type items, but probably more valuable for their size and everything like that. I guess there wasn't really that much else I wanted to mention. Like I said, squandered a bit the uh, the whole graphic part that I was trying to get with this. But yeah, I don't know. Hopefully that, that helped somebody or made made the whole kind of loot system make a little bit more sense how it works in Vanilla Daggerfall at least. And why it has disadvantages to for me personally. Uh, and the way that I'm trying to get over those or or alleviate those disadvantages by changing the method that I'm using. That being this pick a ticket method sort of thing. And you know, if you have any suggestions or whatever for a kind of loot system possibly that might work out better. Uh, please, you know, put them in the comments. I, I'm not expecting to have anybody, you know, say anything or give me any suggestion there. But if you do, you know, feel free to. I'm, I'm totally open for that. This one, I, like I said, I'm literally just settling for this because it's the, it's the thing that I already know how to do. So I'm more comfortable starting it in terms of the code and everything. And it's mostly worked out for jewelry editions. It definitely has its flaws, but it mostly works. And I definitely want the loot system to not, like, suck. Like, I don't want it to be shitty for this, this locked loot containers because that's, like, one of the biggest draws for opening a chest is what's going to be inside and if it's always feels like it's the same like with the stupid loot table system where it's like oh oh this is loot table k so it's always going to be like either shit or like um a lot of gold or like complete garbage or a bunch of these ingredients i want it to feel believable fairly you know random or surprising and worthwhile like i don't want it to just feel like where it's like oh okay don't loot these things because they suck or don't loot these enemies because it sucks uh and it's not gonna have anything useful or whatever uh that's what i'm trying to get at uh with this particular like loot system but yeah i guess enough rambling out of the way i'm hopefully gonna start making some more videos in the series sooner or like you know more now and working on it more uh, but I'll have to see, you know, I'm, I'm still, I'm not going crazy. Like I said, I'm not doing the forced daily videos or t forced twice, twice daily videos. This one, I just wanted to get out there to sort of like empty my mind a little bit on it. And I will hopefully continue working on this whenever, and then uploading another video in this series where it's me actually making some progress instead of just doing this little brainstorming kind of, uh, idea vomiting here. But, uh information dump here but <clears throat> yeah besides all that thanks for watching and uh, i hope you enjoyed and i hope to see you in the next one have a good day